This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm continuing my build of my Voron 2.4 R2 Pro Plus from FormBot. So let's go ahead and get started. So reviewing the manual, it looks like I have to start putting in some threaded inserts, or I'm sorry, heated inserts into my printed parts. So I'm going to start working on that. And let me walk you through what I'm doing so you can see it, and that way, we can go through this together. Now I'll do the threaded inserts or the heated inserts on camera for one of the pieces. There's actually four, four sets that need to be done. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now I believe these are M3 threaded inserts. I've heated up my, my soldering iron. And now I just want to make sure that I have everything oriented appropriately. So I'm going to start with this piece. And there's six inserts here. There's one insert here on this piece, and then we have this other piece that goes with it. They're a set. I'll have to see exactly how those are oriented. But on this other one, I have two down here. Everything else doesn't look like it needs any inserts put in. We're just going to put these aside, and I'm going to start with these pieces first. And that way, I, well, I'll get one whole set done and then work through the rest off camera. Now, when I do these, what I do is I put them in and then I let them sit for at least a little while. That way, plastic has time to cool and they basically set. Now, I'm putting my soldering iron to about 300. Like I said, I just put these in. And then I'll let them cool for a while. For a while, like I said, maybe half hour or so. It's a good time to take a break, I guess. So I have this piece in, and then I have one insert that goes right here. And then let's do the other piece. I'm just going to set this aside. Cool. And then looking at the directions, it's these two holes right here. You can see they don't go all the way through. What I try to do is just make them flush with the part. So now that's actually one whole piece done. And I have four more of these. So I'm just going to go through those off camera. And so I have all my inserts in. So I'm just going to let that cool for a little bit. So I have all the heated inserts in. And let's proceed to the next step. So let's go back over to the manual. So in this step, we're going to put together the belt drive assembly. And it looks like we have some measurements here. We have to get some pulleys, or shafts, and dominantly it looks like just our pulleys and shafts. So let me go find those parts and we'll set them out on my desk. So I found my motion system bag. I'm going to pull out all of these. So it looks like here's the four. Let's look at what all I have. These are 20T, nine wide. Let's just look through all these just to make sure I understand what I have. I'm just looking through them just to, again, check. And here at the bottom, it looks like I have my rods. I have the shafts down here. That's 560 shafts, so we need those. Let's just look through these real carefully. I'm looking at the directions here. It looks like I need GT2 20T9 wide. That looks like these. So, in fact, those are the only ones like that. Those are six wide right here. I apologize, I'm going back and forth. There's six wide, so here's the ones I want. I'm going to take these, put these aside. 
and put everything back in the notion bag and seal that up put it off to the side. I'm going to get my ruler out. So let's spread these parts out. Be real careful with these screws. And let me make sure I have a driver that'll fit these. That one fits. And let me find my other driver and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I found my driver. That side. And let's open this bag up for the shafts. And I'm going to try to mark these or just put a tiny little mark on here. So that way you can just see how far I have to put things on. And let me find that there's my red pen. So I've just put a tiny little mark on there. And these need to go down. There's 33 going. So before I do that, let's put these screws in a little bit. Just want to start them. I've started those. And I want at least one of these screws to be on the flat side here. I'm going to start tightening these. Not going to tighten it too much. I want to still be able to adjust this a little bit. Make sure it's even with my red mark. And of course, it's not. I'm just going to tighten the other side. And I need four of these. So let me do all of them. And this time I'm going to mark the flat side so I can see a little bit better. I'm just holding this up. Got my line. And let me start the screws here. And I'll just put together one more on camera. Carefully line this up. Have this upside down. I actually did the other one upside down too, so let's fix that. We gotta make sure these are right side up. And what I'll do is I'll measure this one again just to be consistent. There we go. So I'm measuring on the flat side just so I can see a little bit better. I don't want to tighten these too much because I don't want to strip them. So that's the directionality of one on these. So the 33 millimeters on this side, the short ends over here, the teeth are pointing towards the 33 millimeters. Now let me do the others and then I'll come back when I finished all of them. So I have the four of them put together and I think I'm ready to proceed to the next step. So let's switch over to the manual. We'll take a look at what we're doing. It looks like I need to look for this bigger pulley, some bearings, shims. We have a fair number of things we're going to need to find. So let's pull out the parts. We'll see what we got. Now, I actually forgot a step here. I actually need to put in some thread locker here. So what I'm going to do is just undo these. Take the screws out. What I'm going to do is just spread a little, and a little bit of thread locker. Instead, I did a whole lot. That's okay. Just dip that in there. Find the one I did. I want to be careful here that I don't lose these. And what I'm going to do is I have microfiber rag. I'll just wipe this down. That aside. So I'm just going to apply bit locker to the rest of these and then we'll proceed on. So I have the thread locker on all those. Now let me look back over at the directions and we'll start putting everything together. I guess I have the gear, the large gears here, the things around, my bearings, 
and I'll need to find my shims. So let me do that and then we'll take a look at everything. So the last bit I need here is the five millimeter shims. We'll put those aside. Let's see if we can figure out how we need to get these things together. Let me see if I can put both on screen simultaneously. I realize this isn't a perfect view, but this is the best I could come up with. So let me start with one of these gears. I'm leaving my red locker here. Let me move it over to the side. Last thing I need to do is make a huge mess, but I'm probably going to anyway. Put this aside. And now it looks like, let's go over to my bearings. I need a bearing on the end here. I have a bearing on the end that doesn't have a spacer. Then it looks like I'm going to do two spacers, a one, two, a bearing, two spacers, And then the big gear. Now, this looks a little bit different than the drawing. The way I'm interpreting this, this needs to go like this. Now, what I'm going to do is take screw here. Get this going into the flat. And then I'm just going to screw this in. I'm going to do the other one. Get that in my thread locker. I'm going to take my rag and clean this off a little bit. And then I need another bearing on the end. Bearing over here too. It looks something like this. There's my completed piece. What I'm going to do is just set this off to the side and I'll do the next one and I'll do that on camera as well. So for my next one, I'm again going to take it start off with the shims here. So I have my piece. I'm putting on two shims. I'm putting on a bearing. Two shims. And then I'm putting on the big gear. I'm putting the big gear with this part facing towards the bearing shims. Just going to hold this like this. And I want to put a little thread locker threads here. Now, I'm reading the manual. What I'm noticing is apparently a lot of people that have problems, it's, it's due to quickly these parts coming loose. So the directions, and again, the, I just missed it initially and so i'm just putting that getting a little thread locker in there and go take my microfiber rag clean it up a little bit i need a bearing the end here and i need a bearing on the bottom there's another completed piece what I'm going to do is do the other two off camera, since you've seen that, and then I'll be back when I have that totally assembled. So as you can see, I have the four pieces complete. Now I'm just going to proceed to the next step. So it looks like looking at the directions, go to a full screen, I need to find the G2 188 millimeter belt loops. I should have four of those. So let me look through my parts and see if I can find those. So I found the belt loops so go right here. And everything so far has been so well labeled. I'm really enjoying this. Put together 
done several builds now, and I don't think anything has been labeled as good as this kit so far. So again, I'm really pleased. Now, if I'm interpreting this correctly, I've taken out my 188 millimeter belt. I'm gonna very carefully tilt this on its side. The end bearings come off real easily. I want to just slip the belt on and then I'm going to place the, and I need to move the bearings a little bit so they fit in the grooves here. You can see there's a little bit of a groove, so I want those bearings fit in there you notice there's some space so show that at the side so the belt is on there i'm going to just pull the belt up like this again just want to make sure that's all sitting down there right i pretty much need to hold it off the desk because again that's going to this is going all the way through it's going to push the out of the grooves. So I just want to hold this like this for right now. Let me go to the next step. And it looks like I'm going to take the cap here and slip this on top. And of course, my belt has come off. Let's get the belt on there correctly. Now, it feels like everything's spinning in there, so that's good. Now, let me put this down very gently, and I need to find my M340s. So here are my M340s. Let me set up my driver so I can screw these in. These should go through and hit the threaded inserts, or heated inserts, I always say threaded inserts, that I did earlier. Looks like I need six of these screws. If I'm interpreting this right, let's go right through here and let's screw these in. I want to go tight, but not too tight. That actually looks all right. So let's put the rest of the screws in and then I'll come back. So I have all the screws in. It looks like things are moving all right. Feels nice and tight. I think this looks good. Just noticing a lot of quality of life features here. There's an indentation here, which lets me get to the internal screws there. I'll tighten it up if I have to, so that's pretty cool. And then you can see it right through there. So pretty neat. Let me put that aside. So I've completed this part of the Z drive. So let's go down in the directions and just look what we need. It looks like there's another accent piece here. So I'm gonna to need to find that. Let me look around. I bet that's going up on this side. Because I have the threaded inserts there. So I found my accent parts here. Now it looks like I need to slip an M5 nut into each of these. I'm just gonna snap those in. The, it's not working on off the side. It looks like the nut actually needs to be facing down, sort of like this. And let me get the screws, and I need my M38s again. So I'm the part oriented like this. It's going to go down through here. Initially, I'm not going to screw these in too tight. If I get the other screws started, then I can tighten it all up. I'm trying not to shake this too much because I don't want that nut to fall out. I'll take it all apart again. Now I'm just going to tighten these up. I'm going to hold it on this side. And as you can see, I'm just checking the belt. It's coming through. That looks correct. Set that aside. And now we'll work on the next one. 
as you can see that it come out. It's a little bit of a problem. Let me see what's holding this nut in, what screws in here. And then I'll see if I can start that in a second. What I'm going to do is skip down a couple steps. I'm pulling out my N516s. And let me get four of these screws out. And what I, those nuts are holding is the rubber feet. Basically, they're holding these on. So what I'm going to do is just put on the rubber feet. Now I'm skipping steps, which is not something I like to do. But that way I don't have to worry about that nut falling out. Because once it falls out, if I have this all on, it's actually going to be a pain in the butt. To, why is it just get this feed on? And well, if I get the feed on, I'm going to have to loosen this. Let's see if I can make this work. I'll loosen the foot as much as possible. Let's see if I can slip this screw down here. For right now, I'm just going to weave foot a little bit loose. See if we can make this work. So I have that in tight. What I'm going to do is just tighten that a little bit. And I think that'll be all right. I think I can live with that. Everything looks correct. So let me clean up a little bit and make it rid of this red locker. Rather than proceed to the next step, I've just realized how long this video is gone. I'm going to pause and then split this and then resume in my next video. So I look forward to talking to you again soon. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Thanks. Have a good night.